John Locke was born during the Enlightened years, the time where people focused more on reason than religion. He lived primarily in the 1600s in England. His father's military connections allowed him to attend the prestigious Oxford University, and there he studied medicine. After university, Locke became a physician. Thomas Sydenham, who was a famous physician, was a mentor of Locke's and largely influenced his philosophical thinking. As a physician, Locke was appointed to take care of Lord Anthony Ashley Cooper, who later became the Earl of Shaftesbury. The two were close friends, and as the Earl's status grew, so did Locke's. The Earl majorly influenced Locke's theories. Speaking of theories, what are they? Let's find out. Natural Rights and Government Locke firmly believed that all people are equal. He believed that all people were born with certain natural rights and should live in an environment where nobody takes these rights away. We can see some aspects of natural law in Locke's theories, despite the fact that he was known primarily as a positivist. To make sure everyone had natural rights, Locke believed that government interference and executive power were necessary. A responsible government was important to make sure that people were equal and free. We can see Locke's positivist attitude in this theory because he believed that governments needed to create laws to ensure everyone natural rights and that people should follow those laws. However, Locke also believed that if governments were not protecting their citizens' rights, then a rebellion was necessary. These views actually influenced the English Rebellion, which overthrew King James. Locke's theory of natural rights for all and the role of government to protect these rights showed how he bridged the gap between the natural law and the positive law. Locke tried to suppress the pessimism of Hobbes by incorporating some aspects of natural law in his series. Natural law also influenced Locke's theories greatly. There are many applications today to this idea of natural rights and government. The fact that Locke believed in natural law and the human moral influence on law almost 400 years ago is a testament to the forward-looking ideas that he had. Today, you can see that many decisions and laws are based on the moral views of society, rather than what the government says. Things like lobbying, peaceful protesting, and voting it allows people to have an impact on the government based on their personal views. For example, female rights today are a lot more equal to the rights of men because people's morals have slowly changed. These morals have then influenced the law. Not much has changed in Locke's theory, though, and its implementation of it in modern society. The majority of society still believe in equal rights and try to ensure these rights for all. For example, our hashtag Black Lives Matter campaign is an effort to treat people the same, despite the color of their skin. We also see political rebellions occurring, like the one in Egypt a few years ago with overthrowing Mohamed Morsi, the Egyptian president. Now, in regards to human nature, Locke believed that humans were rational and tolerant, and this means that people can endure a lot of pain and a lot of hardships without much reason. And you can see this in his views of slavery, or a lot of the other issues that people have faced across time, and how humans have really persevered and endured through the pain. And even in the 1600s, where equal rights for all people, despite their races, was not something that people believed in, Locke thought that slavery was unjust if people were forced into it, no matter what race you are, no matter what your social status was. And he believed that people should make decisions based on morality, while also taking into consideration the pol political views of the country. So let's use an extreme example. If a person's religion told them to murder somebody or s to murder somebody as a sacrifice, then their own morals, which would tell them that murder is wrong, should take priority over the religion. And um, to talk about the positive views in this theory, we can also believe we can also see that Locke believed politics was really important to take in con into consideration at the time, and the government did play an important role, but at the same time, morals played just as, imp as an important role in society. And you can see a lot of relevance in those ideas today, and how um, you can see a lot of evidence that human nature hasn't changed much over time. Um, you can see now that people are still facing a lot of pain and hardships. If you look at refugees or poverty that's happening, you can also see that slavery is considered unjust today for everybody. Um, if people are forced to work against their will, it is illegal. And you can also see that the decisions are based on morality and politics. For example, um, if I'm making a ed business ethical decision, I'm going to base it on what the law says, and I'm also going to base it on what my individual morals say. And those are really good examples of how Locke's human nature views have evolved, but at the same time been really similar over the past 400 years. 
Now, Locke was famously known as the father of liberalism. He believed that everybody had the right to life, liberty, and security in the pursuit of happiness. And if this sounds familiar, you can see a sentence similar to this in the American Declaration of Independence and our Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which states that everybody has the right to life, liberty, and security as one of our fundamental freedoms. And this idea of rights directly connects to liberalism. Locke thought that the government should make sure that everybody had these rights, from the average Joe to the high and mighty kings and queens. And this may seem obvious to us in this day and age, but think about it like this. In Locke's time, liberalism wasn't very celebrated. Locke was known as the father of liberalism because he started the beliefs in responsible governments and constitutionalism and civil liberties and the rule of law. And um, in addition to this, the Earl of Shaftesbury influenced Locke's liberalist ideas. Um, the Earl also believed in constitutions, and the two together created the fundamental constitutions of Canada. And due to the fact that Earl was one of the founders of the Whig Party, he pushed Locke to favor constitutional monarchism and to go against the, to the dominant Tories at the time. And liberalism is st still very prominent today, and although it's evolved, the fundamental ideals and rules of law, constitutionalism, and responsible government are largely similar. I mean, you see now, even now, the rule of law being employed, and the government ensuring that everybody has the equal rights to, um, to, for everybody, to make sure that everybody, every citizen is treated fairly. And you can see this in the justice system, for example, innocent till proven guilty, or precedent, and all these examples are um, favorable views that liberalism is growing in society today and slowly making law more just for everybody. And the fact that Locke thought of this, Locke thought of this stuff 400 years prior to now really demonstrates his views and his forward-thinking views of people and society. John Locke published the two treatises anonymously. It focused on the first treatise, which argued against Sir Robert Filmer's beliefs of the special rights given to kings and society was founded on patriarchy. Locke believed that since everyone was equal under the law, kings should not be given special rights. In addition, older male dominance didn't ensure a responsible and equal government. In the second treatise, Locke talks about the state of nature. That is a state of perfect freedom, of acting and disposing of their own possessions and persons as they think fit within the bounds of the law of nature. People in this state do not have to ask permission to act or depend on the will of others to arrange matters on their behalf. The natural state is also one of equality in which all power and jurisdiction is reciprocal and no one has more than another. Locke also talks about property rights, slavery, representative government, and the right of revolution in his second treatise. The two treatises are anonymously published at first but eventually become publicized, known as Locke's most famous and important publication. The first treatise was mostly an attack on Sir Robert Filmer, who believed that not all people have the same rights under the law. For example, Robert thought that kings should have more power than regular citizens, which Locke saw as unjust. His treatise focused largely on how all people should be seen as equal under the law. And you can see lots of applications of that today. For example, much like the rule of law where everyone is equal under the law, or the former president of Brazil being brought in for questioning even though he has power. Now, the second treatise was more defined on what it represented. This, this theory laid the foundation for such so much legal change because it discussed the equality for everyone, and you can see examples of this in the natural rights and morals that many civilians have. Locke believed that if people were not equal, and if the government was not treating everyone justly, the citizens had the right to rebel against the government. These writings largely influenced Western philosophy. We can see the idea of property rights and representative governments in our law and politics today. The equality of all people is important to us as a society, and Locke's ideals apparent in the two treatises are still with us today.